my friend, it's Duke. Have you ever tried auto layout to be one UI that can work on every screen size in iOS? Frankly, um, when I just learned, tried to figure out this tool, it was so frustrating and so confusing for me. Why did I? I was just trying to add a bunch of things into the UI and then it doesn't work. It didn't make any sense for me. And I, I know that maybe you are trying you are experiencing the same feeling that's why in this video i will share with you what i learned what i figured out in this tool called auto layout what is it how you can use it how you can use it correctly and very simple this is the app that we'll build together in this episode very simple app but you will learn you will learn everything you need to know about the fundamentals of auto layout so let's get into the demo before that Let's download the starter project I prepared for you by clicking the link on this page and then you go into enter your name and email there so that I can send you the complete project I'm sorry, the starter project for this app and also I will give you my new free iOS courses series to help you build beautiful and powerful iOS apps So click the link on this page, download the starter project and let's get into the demo I am going to share with you these three steps very very fundamentals, very very basic but it will clarify everything for you for auto layout you will look back after this hour here together you will see hi this is so simple I have been overthink about this this is so simple you will love this the first one you need to learn about is what is auto layout what exactly is it people see it as a very 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 complicated tool obviously it is a very powerful tool but personally I just think of it as a tool that allows us to define a set of constraints to create relationship between two views in our UI now hold on hold on <laughs> what does it mean right auto layout allows us to create constraints that define relationships between two views what does it mean what is constraint what is the relationship between two views so to demo about this one before we go into our app right here that i have for you right here we'll go into this demo building this app ui with auto layout all over again but before we do that i want to share with you this demo that i want to draw things for you so that you understand this one so i have my ipad over here and i want to draw this ui with you so let's say our app very very simple we have this whole screen with one single view on the screen right now the first thing you need to learn is the the coordinate system of ios so here we go this is the root of the or this is the origin of the coordinate system for iOS zero zero right and this is oops oh my god it's worse god drawing in front of a lot of people this is the X axis and this is our Y axis right this is our Y axis and this is the X axis now what happens is for this UI it's very much looks like this it is the 4.7 inch screen right it looks pretty good on this one but if we run this guy on a 5.5 or even or even bigger something like this remember this is our UI and I want to show you this tool if you haven't downloaded this project yet go to the link right down below this video you will find a link to download this starter project okay and this thing right here you can see that if I go into the assistant editor and then I will click into preview like this and it allows me to add into different devices okay I will delete this thing first so you can see it so this is the 6s the 4.7 inch screen right so if I click into this point this one over here and we show the 6s plus which is the 5.5 inch screen it is too big that's why the UI gets too small there is spaces around here this is the background view that root view of the view controller right and even worse if we choose the ipad pro 12.9 inch screen because do you see the problem like it's too big and this one is just like a fraction of the screen so how can we fix this one how can we fix this well we use auto layout and in order to use auto layout we will tell auto layout some pieces of information that we call constraint 
Okay, I hope that you can see this. Constraint. What it means is we're at the distance from two views, the relationship between two views. And you see that every app has the root view, right? Every app has the root view. Oops, the root view right here. So this app has the root view. The root view always attaches to the top, the left, the right, and the bottom of the screen. So how, no matter how the screen big is, it's still the root view is still as big as the screen, right? So we will use this root view right here. We use it as our anchor. We use it as our anchor. All right, make sense? So now let's add some constraints into this root view because we want to have now in order to tell auto layout a view that is we call it unambiguous we need to tell auto layout this is very important we need to tell it four pieces of information number one the x position number two the y position number three the width of the view number four is the height okay x y width and height that's it if you add the constraint to satisfy these four pieces of information everything will work x y width and height so for example this thing right here what is the x position the x position is according to this coordinates right so i'm sorry to x that axis so the x position we want to have something like some point over here let's say this is 16 points from the left of this view to the left of the root view so that is the x position how about the y the y is this coordinate right here this x is right here right so the y we want to have like 64 points from the top of this view to the top of the root view so that's the y next up how about the width now the width here we can specify whatever how many the width right here right but if we specify let's say this is like uh, 200 points the width of this guy if we specify the exact width of this guy then if the screen is bigger then it will just as 200 points as big but what we want to do is as the screen changes the width of the screen changes we want also to scale the width of this view so we'll attach at another constraint attach it the right of this view to the right of the root view to be like 16 points okay so because we have this thing over here and this thing over here so the width always the this view always attaches to the left and the right of the root view that's why the width it also changes as we move along as we change the size of the screen that's why the width now how about the what height the height maybe you want to have the height here is let's say um, 100 points something like that right so we specify the height now this thing is all very 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 abstract i try to draw things for you but from this drawing all I want you to see is to create unambiguous constraints constraint is again the distance between that thing we specify the x y width and height right you need to specify four pieces of information for our tool layout to work on every view number one you need the x position number two the y position and then the width and finally the height so that is step number one you learn about auto layout so number two you will learn about constraint number three let's go into our demo because it's all matters is all it matters is our demo is all our code building apps right so if you haven't downloaded this um this thing yet then download it now and let's get started this is our starter project so let's look at this starter project if i go into the document outline over here the ui is very important it's very simple but you will learn everything you need to know about auto layout pretty much okay so the first thing you see the hierarchy of the view it has a root view as always a view controller has a root view and then we have a background image right we have a background image view like this and then we have a label for the question and then we have the button the next question button and then we have a logo image view this logo right here now we'll run this guy on the device whenever we click into this button we have a new awesome question very funny question into the screen it's just that simple 
So now the problem with this one, when we preview it onto different screen size like that, I click to the assistant editor, right? And it doesn't work on bigger screen than the 4.7. And frankly, it doesn't work on the 4S because the 4S is too small and we don't see the button, we don't see the complete text, and we don't see the complete background view. How can we fix that? Well, in order to fix this, we use auto layout. Let's add the constraints. So number one, we always add the biggest one yet, or the like the first one in here, right? So the background view, the closest to our root view. So I will add the background view. I'll click into this background view. Don't click into the label. Click into the background view like that. And then over the bottom here, we have some buttons. The first one is we call stack. We will talk about that later. The align button, the pin button, and then we call it the resolve auto layout problem right here. Okay, so let's click into this pin button. This pin button, it has very, very cool features. That is, if you see that this square right here, this square, it represents, it represents this background view. Okay, and then these four boxes around it represent the edges or the nearest neighbor of this background view. So if you click to this dialog button, drop down, you'll see that this is the view. It means that the the root view, right? And then if we click to this, it's also the view. It is the right, left edge of the view. So what I want to do is, because this background view, we want to attach it so that no matter how big the size of the device is, it always has the full screen width and height, right? So. In order to have full screen, I will attach the top of this guy. Now, we need what information? We need X, Y, width, and height. No matter it is, we need X, Y, width, and height, right? So the X position, why is it? The X is this coordinate right here, right? The X. So we have zero to the left of the root view. We attach it zero to the left. How about the Y? The Y is, oops. I just messed up. The Y is this coordinate right here. This this axis right here, right? So we want to have the distance from the top of this guy to the top of the root view to be zero. So I attach it like that too. Okay? So I hope that you enjoy this one because it's, it's so simple, right? It's just very representation stuff. Next up, the width. We need the width. Well, the width of this guy, again, we want to have the width of this guy to be the exact width of the root view. So how can we mix that? Well, because we already attached the left to zero to the left. Now, why do we attach zero to the right? So that if the edge uh, changes the size, then this thing changes the size, right? So if this width is bigger, then the width of the background view is also bigger. So I will select this guy. And let's do the same for the bottom because we want to have the height is also the same height as the root view. Now, after we do that, let's add the four constraints right here. Add the four constraints and boom. There we go. Now, if you look closely, if you look closely, I will zoom in like this. You will see uh, there is a blue guy lines like this one. It represents a constraint. And if it is blue, then it works. Okay, and then we will see that we have some things else. Now, let's cling to this guy, try to preview it. Okay, I will preview this guy again here. And let's see, okay, I think that there's a problem with this simulator, but let's have the, all right. Now I will run this guy on a 6S plus, and then you will see the difference, all right. This is a um, bug in Xcode so far, so we don't see the preview correctly. All right, guys, so this is the 6S Plus. There we go, and when we click the button, it still works. But now, our background view is instead of something like this, something like that, right? It's too small. Now, it connected to the edges of the screen. It's that big. And you will see that this logo is not right in the center anymore. And this thing, this text is also not in the center. And this one is also not in the center, right? So we will change that. Let's add some more constraints. So, number one, let's add this um, this logo right here, right? So I want to show you another way of adding constraint. Number one, you need the X position, right? The X position, why is it? The X is this thing, right? 
the axis is this thing. But remember that we don't want it to be like a fixed position for the axis because this thing want to have this logo to be right in the center of the screen. So we says, we tell auto layout that, okay, I want to add a constraint so that this thing has the X position of right in the center of the root view. So I will hold control key, very important, hold control key, and then drag it from this logo image view to this outside, okay, to the root view, or I'm sorry, to actually this thing is the background view. So I will drag it like this to background view because the background view is now good with auto layout. We can anchor it against that. So I will release it and then we want to click into the center horizontally like that. Click center horizontally and boom, you see this? Now it says, what it says is it's all right. It means that we are doing something wrong here. Now, why do we do something wrong? Because we still miss four pieces of information, right? We need the Y, the width and height. We have the X, now we need the width, height and Y. So let's have the Y. The Y position, I want to have still this vertical space, right? So you can use the pin button by clicking this logo, pin button, and then you will see that eight to the, I, mean, I will uncheck the constraint to margin, and then we have eight to the top, but we don't want to use that. We, I want to use control drag, show you another way. So it's still control drag to this logo, control drag to this background view, release it, and then we have the vertical spacing. Click into that, and we have the vertical spacing like that, okay? So that is the Y. Now, what it says is it, it doesn't have the right again it has two blues that's good that's great but now it has this yellow dashed line so what it means is okay auto layout says to us hey you tell me the width of the x and the y but now the width and the height of this one it should be this big this dashed line like that right but the actual width and height in the screen you have for me is just this small so you need to change that right so I will make sure that this thing has control drag to this guy, to this guy, or, and then I will check the height. And then control drag to this guy to the left of itself. Release it, and then we have the width. So that is the four pieces of, of information with height X and Y, all right? Now, if I run the project once again, now it's on a six plus, so it should be bigger. There we go, let's see. Come on, there we go. Now you see that this thing, it is right on the top. It's now in the center, right? So let's fix the next thing is our button. Button right here, want to be right, it's still like this, right? To the bottom, connected to the edges of the screen. Let's do that. The first thing is what? The first information is our, let's see here, the X position. So let's add the X position. X position is to the left, right? So I control drag from the left to the left here. I have the horizontal space. The Y position is, um, should we do like the top here? No, we want to attach the bottom. So control drag from the bottom of this button to this background view. Release it. And then we have the vertical spacing. That is the Y, right? And now you will see that we have the yellow dash line again. It says that it should just be this small. It says that it's that big. That means that we are missing the width and height. So let's deal with the width. The width for this guy is, we want to make sure that it's always somehow this big, right? It connected to the edges of the screen. So again, we control drag to the right like that. Release it and then, um, okay, we still, we already have the horizontal spacing. Oh, okay, so I think I messed it up. Okay, I will hit the Command Z again. So we missed out the Y, Command Z again, and we have the, miss out the X, okay? So now this thing doesn't have constraints anymore. Or one key you can do is, I will just add this guy, okay? I will just add the back, you don't have to do it along with me. So let's say, here's, a, so here's the problem. We have this thing, it's like we messed up, right? How can we fix this? So I will select this button and then click into this last button right here. 
it says the resolve problem. And then I will select this guy called clear the constraint for the selected views. Okay, clear the constraint. And it cleared the constraint for us. All right, so let's do this button again. So we want to connect this guy to the left. And then we choose, oops, we choose. Uh, all right, I don't see this. So let's select this guy. Use the P menus again. Uncheck the constraint margin, okay? And then let's choose 16 to the left because that is the X position. Have 20 to the bottom, which is the Y position. And then let's choose 16 to the right because remember that you have to click this beam, uh, this beam over here. It has to activate like that, okay? 16 to the right, so we have the width, right? How about the height? Yeah, we can check the height over here, 44 points. So that's the Y, height. Add the constraint, and we're good to go. Now, you will see that this thing right here, okay, I will pause a little bit so that you can follow along. You can pause the video, or you can follow along, okay? All right, now I hope that you follow along so far. I apologize if I go too fast, but this is exciting stuff. So let's get going on, will we? Now, if we click into this button, you see that it has this dash line again and says plus two. So it means that this width is not correctly placed, right? We can click into this button, click the resolve again, resolve button, and then I would select update frames. It means that I will update the frames according to what pieces of information we tell auto layout. Click that. And now everything is blue, everything is happy. Looks nice. Let's run the project once again and let's see how it works. Okay. And by the way, if you are running this project on Xcode 8, then you should be good to go. If you run it on Xcode 8 below 8, then it shouldn't, then you should download Xcode 8. Okay. So here we go. This button my friend is connected to the edges of the screen. That beautiful. All right. Now, the last thing we had to do is our text. We want it so that it's connected, so that it's always in the center, something like that, right? So let's cling to this text right here. I want to use the P menu again. Click the P menu, uncheck the constraint to margin. Click the top, 16 to the left, 16 to the right, um, let's say 16 to the bottom. The bottom here, remember, it is the next question because it is the closest member of, uh, neighbor of this label, right? And the left here, oops, I will check it again. The left here is our view, the root view. And then the right is our view. The top is, guess what, the logo. Because the logo is closer, closer to this label, right? So there we go, four things, add the constraints, and boom. Now, what do we do? Yeah, we resolve the auto layer problem, click that, update the frames, there we go. Everything is blue, everything is happy. So let's run the project and see how it looks like, my friend. There we go, beautiful seed, that's a good sign, isn't it? Come on, come on, there we go. Very nice, see? So now we have the complete project using auto layout for all of our UI. It can work on both iPhone 6s, iPhone 6s Plus, and believe me, if you do it like that, you can run it on the iPad or even the four point screen. That, my friend, is auto layout. I hope that this video adds a lot of values to you and you find auto layout easier to work with. Of course, this is just the beginning, but hey, if you like this episode, can you do me a favor? Can you subscribe to this channel right here on YouTube so that I can continue to deliver free tutorials and free trainings to you every single week? And also, what I would love to you to do is um, go into the link on this page so that you can enter your name and email there so I can send you my new iOS course for free. There, I will send you, after you submit your name and email, I will send you my new free series of iOS tutorials helping you to build Photos browser app with everything about table view, auto layout, building REST API, JSON app, all of those good stuff. And of course, I will send you weekly tutorials great trainings for you there sharing with you what I am learning about iOS development all the new stuff all the new 
um, framework and new skills that you can learn and master in iOS development from what I learned, what I study. So click the link on this page and see you on the other side. And always go out there every single day of your life, learn new things, craft your ideas, and contribute to the world. I'll see you next week.